Well, welcome everybody. Hope you're having a good Monday. Monday evening, time to stream some Soul Herder. I played a, a bit over the weekend. Uh, I, I had a build for a little bit that I was kind of satisfied with, but um, I just thought recently that Kiki Jiki wasn't really popping up like too much as a win condition. Like I was just grinding things out and um, didn't really feel like um, the, the courting for Kiki thing was really paying off very much. So I uh, thought I would just try um, a couple black cards. Like I tried um, Ravenous Chupacabra and brought the Siege Rhino back in. Uh, it seems like a, kind of a very small deck building cost for that kind of stuff because I already had four birds and four astrolabes. Um, but I just found my way to um, Reflector Mage instead of Chupacabra for now. And um, it came, I played against Burn a couple times this afternoon and. Uh, and lost both matches, and a little bit frustrating uh, because, well, I don't know. They, I think they just had really good draws against me. Uh, they never mulliganed. They had like turn two Idolin each game, and trying not to let that really get me down. But it seems like the uh, the strategies that I lose to the most, well, the strategy singular that I lose to the most consistently is still burn. So. Um, it got me to thinking about uh, the build that I had been working on. So previously, I had been trying out these Narnum Renegades, which I might be the only guy in Modern trying to play Narnum Renegade. Uh, but you play a fetch on turn one, get a basic forest, play this thing. It's a 2-3. Now they play a Goblin Guide and can't really do anything. They play a Swift Spear, can't really do anything. Uh, so I was thinking also, okay, it's a 2-3. It's a pretty powerful one drop, but our strategy is not, it's obviously not aggressive. So, um, I really wasn't getting in much damage with these guys, uh, so that led me to think about other options that could be better against Burn, and, you know, some people on the, uh, on the Discord, uh, seem to love Goose, I, I really, really don't like Goose, if I knew I was only going to play, be playing against Burn all the time, I, I'm sure I'd play Goose, it's, it's a monodork, it gains life, uh, but against other decks, I don't want to have to pay mana, to refuel my goose it, it just it's always seemed bad to me in my testing so if you want to run goose run goose but it seems like it's only good like in urza strategies so replacing in, in this build replacing the um narnum renegades is this silly card perimeter captain now i had already been running eight walls and i i draw one or two of these in every single game uh if not if not more some games i just draw like a whole bunch of walls uh, perimeter captain, though he doesn't look like a wall, is is also a wall. He's a uh, a defender. So, <laughs> horny vegan, are you are you just coming in here calling calling my decks memes like right off the bat? Not very nice. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, <laughs> this this is another wall. It's a one drop. It's an O four. It synergizes with other walls. It's it's a it's a big old butt down on turn one, and yeah, it's just. Uh, Unlike Narnum Renegade, which can just die to a lightning bolt, you say, oh, that's great. Like, it traded for a burn spell. Sure, but if, if that's what we're going for, um, why not play something that doesn't actually die to a burn spell? So this is an 4 It doesn't die to a burn spell. It can, if they want to attack, let me block, gain life with it, and then burn it. Sure, great. Like, all about it. Um, so since I'm on just a bant list right now, getting rid of Kiki Jiki, I went back to the Hierarchs. Um, and I, w I, I dropped in the singleton time warp just like just to have uh, the combo win condition. Um, if you draw the time warp, you can always cord for the eternal witness and get the pieces together. Uh, and then I have the singleton Arcades here. Uh, it's a pretty powerful card for just four mana. Uh, flying Vigilance, three five, kind of a win condition just unto itself. Uh, but it says whenever a creature with Defender enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. So Wall of Blossom is going to draw two cards. Wall of Roots, uh, going to draw a card. Perimeter Captain, going to draw a card. Also says, uh, each creature you control with Defender assigns combat damage equal to its toughness. You guys know how that works. And can attack as though it didn't have Defender. So suddenly this thing is a 4-4. I know, I know, like, Doran's strategies are pretty, pretty funny, pretty janky, but I've already been running these guys, and these are cornerstones of the deck, these two, these two walls. Uh, Wall of Roots has just been sensational with Court of Calling. Um, and I already had these two slots uh, dedicated to like early game protection against 
burn in particular, but you know more broadly against aggressive strategies. So if I'm already running those, um, and we have all this flex at the top end, why not try Arcades? So that's where I'm at. Um, hey DV, uh, welcome, welcome to the stream, guys. Um, this is pretty much the list that I've been uh, working with. You know, uh, I got a four-one uh, last week, and it's just like two cards different. You know, I had, um, I guess I had the Kiki in here, but I didn't win any games with Kiki Jiki um, in that in that league. And uh, the Narnum Renegades instead of Perimeter Captain. The rest of the deck, uh, exactly the same. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll see how it goes. Uh, I had four Burn Tins. I'm bringing back in two Oriok Champions. Um, just a more impactful creature. Um, Burn Tin, I had been on four because it's so easy to cord for. You get it like really, really early in the game. Uh, Oriok Double White, a little bit rough for us. But, you know, between... Um, Astrolabes and Hierarchs, hopefully it's not going to be too bad. And uh, the rest of the sideboard, uh, I, th I think I've, it's just been the same that I've been working with. So anyhow, uh, I'm going to just play a Q at first, see how it feels. Uh, this is literally the first game I've played with Arcades. This is now, I think, the sort of fourth um, variety of the Orion build. Uh, Orion built sort of focused... <laughs> version of Soul Herder. 20 play points, and we'll just wait for an opponent to join us. I could jump into a league in a little bit if the deck sort of ends up feeling kind of cool, but um, I kind of want to see if Arcades actually does stuff, because I have um, been plenty of games where I've had a bunch of walls but haven't had any pressure. Get Arcades down, seems like it could, you know, add some pressure. I won the die roll. And we'll see what the opening hands look like. This guy's name is Burger King, and he's playing Luris. Typically, sort of okay for us. This is a slightly um, weird hand, but I think it's a keep. Just thinking about land sequencing now. All right, so I'm going to keep, probably just lead with Prairie Stream into Forest. Yeah, let's go Arcades for the memes. <laughs> for the memes. Opponents mulliganing to six. Arcades is a, is a lot of, a lot of um, power jammed into four mana, I think. Also, let's see. I do ha obviously I do have Lavinia in the main deck. I was thinking for a while about whether I wanted to swap her out um, into the sideboard and run Stonehorn in the main. Uh, I don't know. It's a little bit of a wash. I hope they don't thought seize me here. It'd be kind of annoying. Okay, well, this is um, scales, hardened scales. Reflector Mage uh, could be handy in this matchup. Arcbound Ravager is their payoff card. Pretty nutty in this deck. Okay, Cord is um, kind of cool. Sometimes I set a stop on my opponent's main phase, uh, just so if I want to blink your Ryan and get my stuff back on their end step, I can do that. If you just go straight into the end step and then you blink your eye in, um, you get your stuff back on your end step, which is unfortunate. Uh, I have both the Deputy of Detention and Reflector Mage in the deck. <clears throat> but Reflector Mage is going to be pretty good here. Particularly if I start drawing into, you know, ephemerates and stuff like that. Surprise Ice Fang Coatl. That's not anything anybody expects in modern these days. Okay, Hierarch. Where were you on turn one?
Okay, this hand just got a whole lot better. A whole lot better. Um, uh, so I could play Noble Hierarch and just path this Hanger Back Walker. Um, but I think just bouncing it is probably fine. If I play Hierarch and, uh, and path the Hanger Back Walker, uh, it means that I'll be able to play Uriah next turn. Um, I don't have a ton of stuff that I can blink right now, though, so... Don't, uh, also, ramping makes Cord better. Um, I think Reflector Mage just seems fine. I don't love having to get a basic planes, but... You gotta do what you gotta do. So just take it slow, get some creatures on the battlefield. Uh, I'd, I'd kind of rather path the Arcbound Ravager, honestly, anyway, because it's, as I mentioned, like their, their biggest payoff card. If they get the o Ozolith down and then play Arcbound Ravager, Garden Scales, okay. Now, one really annoying thing about this matchup is that Knight of Autumn should be good, but Lurish just gets everything back from the graveyard. Walking Ballista. Oh, that's pretty disgusting. All right, so probably going to kill my Ice Fang, I'd imagine, right now. There you go. Yeah, Path on Lurus is always very good, um, but you also just need to path the stuff that's going to kill you. All the Windswept Heaths. Lavinia is going to be pretty good. Can't cast cord yet because we don't have three green anythings. So that's off the table. It's like hierarch, path the thing, and just wait, I guess. And then I guess, you know, we'll figure out what we need to do next turn. It could be either Lavinia or. Lavinia or uh, Uriah bouncing the Reflector Mage. Typically, these guys won't even play Lurus for a really long time. Uh, if I path, I can start thinking about courting for Eternal Witness, um, at which point uh, getting any kind of loop going would be pretty, um, pretty awesome. Now, if I, sorry guys, um, if, I, if I play Noble Hierarch now and then path the Walking Ballista, uh, they're just going to hit my Noble Hierarch, but if I path them now, they get more mana. I think it's probably just better if I path it now. Um, odds are, I mean, I'd imagine they're going to just ping me anyway, just to get into the graveyard rather than ramp, but... Um, I don't want to get too far behind on time, and I do want to get Noble Hierarch on the board. All right, well, they accepted the ramp. That's kind of cool. Walking Ballista isn't one of the cards that can really wreck us. This Windswept Heath uh, can get like a, um, a Shock, and then the next Windswept Heath can get a, a Tangle Land. Lavinia, unfortunately, doesn't really stop the, uh, the man lands from attacking, whereas uh, Stonehorn obviously does. All right, opponents on five mana. They probably should have pinged me with that walking ballista instead of ramping, I think. Uh, I think they might have some sideboard removal. I think it's going to vary from deck to deck. Um, how much removal they have in the main. I think they just lean on Walking Ballista for removal, honestly. 
It's got white light. Uh, so again, uh, Lavinia does not stop Inkbot Nexus from attacking. Hmm. Perimeter Captain. Interesting. Two cards in the opponent's hand. Uh, we know the Ravager is out. Uh, Lurus is in the sideboard. At this point, we've got Cord set up for four, which, if I had Stonehorn, would be pretty good. Um, this is representing a pretty, pretty huge Arcbound Ravager which can then dump onto Ink Moth Nexus. Uh, so potentially just holding up Cord um, for like a, well, really anything, honestly, but um, like an Ice Fang even, just to be able to trade with Ink Moth Nexus could be reasonable. Uh, this guy is mono neutral on... Um, I could play this guy and play um, one of my five drops. Let me go ahead and crack this. Well, they could activate this now and just dump everything onto Ink Moth. Right, they sack this thing. Uh, it would make uh, two Thopters, and then it gets, like, what, um, to four, and then six, and then goes onto that. A little bit scary. This is an artifact, right? Yeah, artifact creature. So I could cord for, um, like, knight. I think I'm just going to play this and then just pass the turn and see what they go for. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I didn't update the um, the plugin with the deck. Okay, double hardened scales, awesome. But I'm trying Arcades with the um. Okay, another Ink Moth Nexus. Not what I was hoping to see. At this point, they have one card in hand. Looks like they're going for something here. I mean, I could have, I could have a path. Seems like it would be good reason for them to not just go all in here. Cord for Witness to rebuy Path would be good. Um, I was thinking getting Witness on the board is probably the way to go, I'd say. I guess they have Luris to rebuy Arcbound. So, um, problem is I, I can ju I'm just going to die next turn because they can just rebuy uh, Arcbound Ravager 
from the graveyard with Lurus. So currently, currently they'd have to pay three um, to re to play Lurus, and then two to play Arcland Ravager, and then need uh, like two more lands basically to attack with Ink Moth. So I don't know that I love ramping them here, um, though I do like getting Eternal Witness down because then if I draw an Ephemerate, I can get another Cord, um, and I'm not going to win with Knight anyway unless I draw like another. Like an ephemerate, which would also be good with Eternal Witness. But no, but killing artifacts is bad against Lurus because Lurus just gets things back from the graveyard, so art, uh, exiling is actually better than just destroying artifacts. Though Knight can, I mean, yeah, like you destroy their hardened scales um, uh, and, and they just get it back with Lurus. So Knight is not nearly as good in the matchup as, as it once was. One card in hand. I guess we'll have to see what, what that one card is. Okay, if it's a land, they can play Lurus, play Arcbound Ravager, and, uh, and go to town with Ink Moth Nexus again next turn. But if I play Lavinia now, then they can't access... Um, oh, you know what? So now I can... Um, I can... Uh, Yorion, Eternal Witness getting back Path seems awesome. Um, so let me uh, see if I want to attack here first. I don't think so. Um, no, again, I'm going to die to Ink Moth Nexus, right? So... So if I play Lavinia now, it doesn't do anything to Ink Moth Nexus. But if I... Okay. You're right. If I play Lavinia now, they can't, they can't go nuts with Arcbound Ravager. Oh, but they can, because Lavinia doesn't affect things unless they're already on the battlefield. So, um... So, no. Definitely Orion, get back path, hold up path for whatever. Oh god, don't do that with don't don't click okay. <laughs> I thought I was gonna blink hierarch. Um Okay, we're done with that. So now we have a flying blocker and we have um access to path. I do have to watch out for time a little bit. I'm I'm kinda dilly dallying here. Maybe cord is actually better here than path, but Path seems okay. If they play Lurus, I've got Path ready. And as soon as we draw an Ephemerate, we sh should just sort of be good to go. Okay, Ancient Stirrings. Throne of Geth uh, can proliferate infect counters. Another ancient stirrings. 
So the one card in their hand at this point is Throne of Geth, and we're going to know what the second card is in a second. Walking Ballista, well, that's, that's obnoxious. Um... <laughs> But Walking Ballista does sort of get answered by Lavinia, I guess, at least for, for, a, for a moment. I don't know. There's always this window when they can activate. Opponent letting the... Uh... So this is going to come in with two extra counters. They can cast it with two. It comes in with four. Can't quite kill your Ryan yet. I've learned playing 80 cards that, like, Ephemerate is such, like, a rare treat. Since we only have four of them, it's, uh... It's so nice to just be... to have access to Ephemerate in this version of the deck. I guess... Does it look like they're going to attack and see if I block and then try to kill Urian? Um, which then sort of frees up space for Ink Moth Nexus to get in in the air. I think I just take this here for the time being. Pretty sure I'm just going to path whatever they play. Um, I mean, it's kind of bad pathing Walking Ballista because they can just bottom it out and then get it back with Lurus. I mean, you got my hierarch. Nice. Good, good, good job. Well done. Not really doing too much right now with the five mana out. I mean, it is, it is killing a creature, but... Uh, okay. That's a little bit more impactful. Let's see if the opponent takes the land or just lets the walking ballista go to the graveyard. Okay. One to my face. It seems just strictly incorrect with Lurus in your deck to, to not let the um, Arcbound, so the Walking Ballista, go to the, the graveyard. Restoration Angel is kind of a good one, right? It means that I can blink Orion on the opponent's turn. It means I can also get in for damage here. <laughs> yeah, perimeter ca captain just doing doing his work here. Um, let's see though. Um, I mean, maybe it's just a good time to get Lavinia down. I don't know. Um, not blocking on the ground. Might as well attack with the reflector mage, huh? Nah, I'm gonna go with uh, resto. And uh, Reflector Mage can bounce the Ink Moth Nexus on end step, and then I can thin ice all oh, the Ozolith. And then I can thin ice uh, Lurus, which they're almost certainly going to play now. I guess we'll have to see. Um... We know they have the Throne of Geth. I imagine they're going to go for um, Arcbound Ravager on Ink Moth Nexus. I have to chump with Restoration Angel. Oh, but now they can't activate Ink Moth Nexus if they play uh, either of the things from the graveyard. I 
But if they activate, um, if they activate Ink Moth, okay, here, let's see what they do here. The Ozolith is pretty annoying. It doesn't even get hit by Lavinia because it's not an activated ability, right? Opponent is now below me on time. Uh, I, ca I can bounce it at instant speed, that's true. I guess there's no reason to bounce. I was going to blink uh, Orion. Huh. Super interesting. Oh god. I don't know if I should have um stopped on their main. This is this is where I should have that stop. Um so at this point, I guess I probably just need to keep Resto in hand and just thin ice the uh the Luris. Lethal in the air. They can't activate this in block, right? So I have four plus three. Seems pretty good. Uh, I don't think there's a way around this. We know they have a Throne of Geth in hand. Uh, I don't, maybe, it, it doesn't really matter, I don't think, since I'm, they're not going to be able to block. They, I guess, um, the reason this is lethal is that they don't have the extra land to activate Inkmoth Nexus, right? So Lavinia actually doing better than Stonehorn in this spot. But Stonehorn, um, potentially in combination with Accord to get uh, Soul Herder can just potentially blank all of their combat, so... So Perimeter Captain not looking great in this matchup. But, you know, my walls in general, I guess, uh, they almost always uh, go to the air against us, so the walls in general are just for, like, Court of Calling. Opponent is, is spending some time, I guess, reading Lavinia, thinking about what's going on. I could attack for an extra two, I guess, with the perimeter captain. Uh, with with uh, the renegade. So again, destroying artifacts is is unfortunately not as strong as it once was against uh, this deck. I've had them just insta scoop to collector oof before, so um, definitely bringing that in. Uh, scavenging ooze good because of Luris. Dranith magistrate um, also sort of good because of Luris. Stonehorn good. All the ceremonious are good. But again, countering stuff is not as good as it should be because Luris just lets him get it back. Yeah, Oof is, Oof is the best out of everything I'm bringing in here. Time Warp, probably not the way to go. The walls, as I was mentioning, were pretty weak. Um, certainly Perimeter Captain.
but they help me chord. So um, when I bring in oof, I usually trim a couple of astrolabes. We're not bringing any uh, like super mana intensive stuff into the deck. Like if I'm bringing in Oriok champions, I wouldn't ever want to cut back on astrolabes. Maybe I'll just cut all the astrolabes, make some space. Trim one wall of blossoms. Yeah, uh, well, Arcades is a flyer. Um, that does buff up all our dudes, but um, I think that's probably a good call. Since I'm also trimming one of the walls. I mean, this whole sort of pocket of cards, all those three drops are pretty good against uh, scales. Don't know how important Uro is. It's ramp, so... Dranith Magistrate, maybe not that important since we have paths. And they don't have, like, other ways to cast things other than from their hand. Like, they're not cascading and stuff, so... I'll trim that. Uh, Phyrexian Revoker, almost certainly going to name Walking Ballista or, or um, Arcbound Ravager. We are slightly ahead on time. I'd like to stay that way. Oh, let me... Uh, actually, I, um, you guys might notice there's a new uh, frame. So I don't have to resize my window anymore. I think this is just a sketchy keep. I think it's, it's a really good hand. Um, if they go turn two walking ballista after like hardened scales, um, just kill my hierarch. But I'm on the draw. I can hit lands pretty easily. Oh, um, do you guys, can you see the chat at all? Um, like, do you see the, do you see the chat in the, it should be in that vertical, um, black box. Ozolith. Oh, I might just need to resize something. Uh, maybe I can actually do that now. Hang on a second. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> oh, wait a second. <laughs> uh, this is so always so uh, tricky. <laughs> you guys get to see the inner workings here. They don't make it very easy um, to adjust this stuff. <laughs> I messed it up again. <laughs> Interlude. Let me let me uh, let me fix this real. Oh God damn it! <laughs> I'm messing it up. Making my opponent wait. What is this guy doing? Come on. What are we doing? Just like that. All right. All right. That that'll have to do for now. The things I do for my my audience. <laughs> well, the last, I think on the last stream, um, I think maybe chat just wasn't showing, like period. If I recall, um, and that was a bummer. It might've had to do with, um, I don't know, some, some minutia with, with running the, the Twitch getting it all set up, but I, I think it should be working okay now. Pendlehaven. Interesting. Okay, Metallic Mimic. Uh, I can set myself up. I'd really, really, really love to draw land here. So if we don't, we definitely just have to leave up Ceremonious Rejection because they're going to go big on some Construct next turn. I'd say probably Arcbound Ravager. Ugh. Uh, they're low on cards, so um, I think I think I just have to pass here. If they go like walking, uh, sorry. If they go um, hanger back walker, I think I'm sort of fine. I could be greedy and um, like play ice fan Coatl right now, but I don't I don't think that's what I'm going to do. Maybe I should have... Mm, I probably shouldn't have attacked with the Hierarch if I'm not playing lands. Uh, 
Well, if they just play Lurus here, which is a possibility, I guess I would just flash an Ice Fang. It would actually be kind of nice now. I'm sorry, what are you saying? Could try to spike a land, too. I just need to leave up my counter spell here. And there it is. No, I mean, I was 100% sure like, that I was going to have to use the uh, Ceremonious. Kind of bums me out that now they get to play Lurus and then eventually recast the, uh, you know, that thing, and I just need to draw some lands. But at this point, I can just tap out, hopefully get two shots at the land. Okay, there we are. So at this point, I guess I probably just want to play... Like Reflector Mage, and then hopefully they'll just slam um, Lurus, and I can deputy the, the Lurus. Okay. Playing right into my hands. Mwahaha. Land. Mm, Court of Calling can get birds, which is kind of a land. Well, or Hierarch, I mean. We're just doing the thing. Doing the thing. Land lets us cord for a three drop. Opponent with four cards in hand. It's a lot of cards. Okay, there's that mimic. And now, hopefully, not walk uh, um, walking ballista. I guess. All right, deck's being a little weird. Now they could block and then and then push, but if if I if I'm gonna reflect or mage this thing end step anyway, they're gonna push anyway. So end step, end step, blink, reflector, mage, bounce this thing. They they then can push the uh, the deputy. Okay, no block. I like it. So now they can't, they currently can't uh, push because nothing has left the battlefield. And I think that if they had the push, they probably would have taken that block. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see, let's, <laughs> let's see what they do. Oof is, and Oof is in the 80 actually right now. <clears throat> okay. So does the opponent have the push? Uh, yeah, it looks like they do. So I think we're going to see Deputy eat it. 
Oh, they hit Soul Herder. That's interesting. <clears throat> so yeah, we can just cord. We should just cord for oof. That's probably the winning line. Would have been the winning line that turn as well, I think. Uh, but they had the push, so they, the push would have killed oof. So actually much better, I guess. Okay, uh, land means we can play uh, one of these two drops and still cord for two. So I will just main phase. I don't really see a reason to not do so. We've got green, green, green here. Uh, Wall of Roots means we could uh, still cord for two. So why not? Okay. So now we just pass. None of their artifacts are doing anything. Okay. It's an interesting matchup. I've definitely I've I've won a bunch and I've lost a bunch. I have to play pretty carefully. Uh So at this point, I mean obviously they're going to let us untap. Um I guess they have one card in hand. Do we know what that card is? I don't think we do. It's a walking ballista. We certainly have to cord for oof right now. But if they let us untap, we can cord for anything. Um, I think just getting oof on the board probably makes sense. They do have these guys are pretty beefy right now. Uh, so I guess. Um, like we could untap and go for, um, like night to start blowing these guys up. We just get eternal witness, get soul herder. Um, soul herder gets back ceremonious rejection. This guy's got the, these guys covered on blocks. This guy has that one covered on blocks. I think I'm going to save the cord. So one, two, three, four, five, six gets back, gets uh, gets Eternal Witness, which gets Soul Herder. We have to wait on it. Um, but Eternal Witness, back Soul Herder. I could tap my creatures instead. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see. One, two, one, two, three, five. Two, three. three okay um i'd like to do this without ideally without tapping um one of these two leave up some defense That doesn't quite work. Well, it does, but then I need to do it. Um, wait a sec. We need to leave up. Let's see. <laughs> this is so annoying. Uh, running out of time. OK. Um, tap. Tap, tap, tap. That's how I want to do it. Now we get uh, Eternal Witness. 
<clears throat> she gets back Soul Herder. Oh, I'm only going to have... Okay, this is fine. Could have done this differently. I thought um, I was going to have Mana to leave up for something. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I can't waste too much time. Uh, I was going to blink uh, Eternal Witness and get back um, Ceremonious, but I think I just want to bounce one of these things. Come on. Okay. Kind of have to think about you know winning soonish. Um, Urian is still um, an option. Opponent just plays a land here. Probably gonna cycle their Lana War Waste. I would guess. So. I do want to chump, but I like bouncing this. Oh, they didn't attack at all. That's cool. Um, oh, wait. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, okay. God. Should have cast uh, an Ice Fang. Also, uh, should have attacked in the air first, but I'm just going to get in with the big soul herder, I think, here. Maybe the opponent's holding up a dismember? Let's not forget to cast this uh, Kowattle. Might be time to cycle these lands, I guess. Oh no, wait, that's just a pain land. <laughs> Never mind. I was just thinking it was the um whatever it's called. Uh what is it? The Pete Pete something? <laughs> Pete Bog. What is the uh what is a cycling land called? Oh the opponent's hooking me up here. Nice. Or maybe not. Nurturing peatland. If 
Ephemerate. A little late to the game there, buddy. Not sure how I lose by attacking with everything. Um, but we don't really have to. We need to attack like, uh, like that, I guess. I don't know. Opponent to the bitter end. I don't, if you don't have plays, why, why don't you just scoop? Yeah, no, I, I knew what it was. It's just, I don't know. It's, sometimes it's hard to call those things to mind, like in the middle of a, in the middle of a match. Brain is focused on other things. Uh, so that did not really show off the, uh, the wall synergies. But it did, it did kind of show off how uh, it's very easy to sideboard out of that, right? I've got, uh, I've got the main deck walls already. Arcades makes, uh, what? It makes Deputy hit a lot harder. Or does it only, no, it only works with Defender, right? It doesn't, doesn't switch. Like, I think that's just, um, Doran tells, it makes our creatures, uh, swing with their, with their toughness. This just says Defenders, I think, right? Yeah, so it doesn't affect other guys, but, um, I don't know, 3-5 Flyer, that turns my walls into, like, 5-5s five and 4-4s. And, uh, four <laughs> what, what, what do you guys think about that? I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick. You can uh, chat a little bit. Uh, so to explain to anybody who wasn't here uh, at the very beginning of the stream, uh, Perimeter Captain is, is first and foremost um, a nod to burn. I had um, Narnum Renegade in this spot as a 2-3 uh, on turn 1 that can uh, just sort of stonewall Goblin Guides and um, Swift Spears. Uh, Perimeter Captain, though, for that purpose just seemed uh, better. And the deck does just, um, like, it loses most easily to stuff like burn and dredge um and getting an 04 down on turn one seems like it's kind of okay i i could definitely see getting the one stone horn uh into the main i was actually kind of fiddling with it earlier it might just be better than than the time warp and you know what i'm just going to go ahead and take that out put put that in and then um I guess we have an, a free card in the sideboard now. Um, I don't think I would sideboard into the infinite combo. It's just something that would live in the main deck. Um, I've already got my four cards against burn. Um, I was thinking about... There was something on my mind about something... Oh, I was thinking... Um, like, we're pretty weak to combo. Um, it's just hard for the 80-card deck to run Force of Negation as effectively as a 60-card deck. Like, we can't, we can't play as many blue cards, I don't think. So um, I was thinking silence might be a really good answer for um, some of the combo decks that we're weak to. You know, like if an opponent uh, like plays Neoform on Allosaurus Rider and you play silence, now Gristlebrand can like, you know, can spend some life, but uh, can't cast any spells. And they'll just have to discard to hand size and then you could potentially like recur the silence. I don't know. It's just just a thought. So, um, so what do I want to add back to the sideboard now? Um, maybe a little bit extra graveyard hate. Um, 
maybe just a second scavenging ooze. I don't know. Um, I do like things that just nuke the graveyard when they enter. Um, I had a Loaming Shaman a while ago, but it seemed like it was kind of too slow for Dredge. Um, like, Dredge is so busted, there should just be like a one-drop creature that just hoses them. Kazali Pride Mage, everybody was talking about Torpor Orb. So I was like, all right, let's put Kazali in the, pride, in, in the, uh, in the sideboard. Um, but I haven't seen a Torpor Orb yet, not one. Not a single one. Uh, all right, so what, what am I missing here in the sideboard? Oh, you know, Idolin of Rhetoric um, can be a good cord target um, against a good number of combo decks. So that, that might be the answer for those decks rather than Silence, I guess. Not sure that I have it right now. I have to go get it. Um, I'm not gonna do that just yet. I think I'll probably just go up another Burrington for the time being, and then maybe bring in the the Idolin of Rhetoric later, just as help against decks that um, I don't really have the Force of Negation to deal with. Uh, Yixlid, Yixlid does, that's true, um, for Dredge. It doesn't, I guess it also does like Uro. I played with Yixlid and um, just found myself not really bringing it in ever. Um, All right, so I'll just throw that in there for now. Um, oh, I, I guess I took the um, Stonehorn just out of the deck instead of moving it to the main. Okay. All right, let's jump into another match. Okay. Um, right. So I've been looking into trying to get a small sponsorship for the uh, for the channel. I was talking to a couple of different potential sponsors, and um, one in particular uh, was telling me that uh, they have like an arrangement with 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 some of their streamers where you can borrow where you can borrow cards, sort of like a rental program. Um, and that's that's sort of the, the the plus of doing the sponsorship. You would put the the name of the company down in in the. Uh, the frame and then i would get to sort of borrow cards and um i'm gonna start doing merfolk streams on wednesdays um i haven't done it in a while i just did it i think this this past week um and i'm looking forward to just like playing more merfolk um so I, I don't know i just i need to get a a few more followers in twitch right now i think i've got about a hundred um it's kind of funny because I have like almost two thousand followers on YouTube, <laughs> but but they're all like Merfolk fans, and they all uh, I guess follow me because of my replay videos that I used to do on Merfolk. So getting like those two thousand people over to Twitch um, would be awesome, but I don't really know how I can do that. <laughs> so I guess we're just waiting for an opponent here. So I might as well just go to. Uh, Look at the deck for a minute. So yeah, Arcades, um, potentially very powerful if we get to a board state where we've got a bunch of walls. Um, it's kind of what the deck does. I get into so many positions where, like, turn 10, I have, like, three or four walls out and just kind of treading water, trying to figure out, like, how can I get Lavinia to to make it so my opponents can't block and attack for lethal but often i need lavinia to attack for lethal so and also like charming prince will blink lavinia but she'll come back on the end step so it's there's no opportunity to block but arcades with all these walls would just be like another win condition like on top of all that stuff so found an opponent um has a gold little frame that means that they're a pretty good player typically you have to earn these earn these frames uh, yeah, that's a nice hand. This is an Arcades hand right here. Huh, I'll have to look into that. I don't know, I don't know that card, DV. Uh, DV, are you in the, um, are you in the Soul Herder Discord? Not quite sure, um, how you found your way to, uh, 
to my Twitch stream. Odds are I'm not going to want to use Path on turn one, so I think I'll just play this. Actually, hmm, I think I'll probably just play the Prairie stream. Um. <clears throat> Wooded Foothills, Th these guys are playing Luris. Uh, okay, playing Luris with Birds of Paradise. Let's see. Kind of want to draw cards here. Well, why don't you join the Discord? The Discord's pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. <clears throat> so what are these guys doing with Luris? I guess we're going to see... Oh, Razor Verge? Hmm. So, I, I have no idea. I mean, if I saw Razor Verge on turn one, I might think Bogles. Oh, God. Okay, well, I have the path. Thank goodness. So I do have to do this right now, and I am super happy to do so. Oh, they're going to put it in the graveyard so that Luris can get it? All right, well, we've got the, uh, we've got the Eternal Witness to get back Path. Well, I can slow them down um, rather than ramp them, which is something. All right, opponent. Yeah, if I get Lavinia, it could be pretty good, I guess. One, two, three, four, five, six. We need two more to get to Lavinia. Okay. Luris. Alright, so now I'm just gonna Eternal Witness get back Path, Path the Giver of Runes. Land is beautiful, okay. Uh, pretty close to Lavinia. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, yeah, yeah, we do. She's in the main. Pretty sure, right? Lavinia and Stonehorn, both of them. So I've got the I've got kind of the loop with Eternal Witness going on here. How can I do this? I can go like green, green, blah, green, green, blue. Hold up Ephemerate and Path. Seems pretty good. Oh, wait, what's going on here? All right, so now we are going to, uh, I guess, draw step them on Giver of Runes. All 
All right, I'm gonna take a take a little punch from the lures here. Protection from white, interesting choice. Um, I mean, if I wanted to path him, I would just path him like, okay, go to Druid. As long as it doesn't have haste, should be okay. Okay. So my thought here is I should go for the, the Ephemerate right now. These guys, they don't run main deck path, right? If they have a path, it kind of blows me out. I could just wait, untap, ephemerate, and then play around path. But I feel like getting ahead of that would be um, nice if I could ephemerate right now. This is where, this is where chat educates me. Uh, does, does Druid play path in the main deck? Hmm? Should I go for it, or should I not go for it? <laughs> Wait for somebody to say something. All right, I'm just going to go for it. It's a combo deck, right? They can't have a path. Don't path me, bro. Yes. All right, game on. Now I get to path Luris, and I get to path Devoted Druid. Oh, wait, wait, stop. <laughs> um, so, I do want to cast it, but... Oh, yeah, this is fine. I'm just getting back Ephemerate, of course. Um, all right, let's do this. Gonna path you... Oh wait, I only have two white, so I have to be kind of careful about this. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to path the druid, and then... Um, They can put it in the graveyard, and this is sort of a fine loop until I get more white sources up. I mean, that's possible, but um, I, I could have done it that way. Um, but in order to path... Yeah, and then I would, still, I would just have one ephemerate in hand in that case. So we know they don't have the path now. I think it's probably best just to... Well, I have... Hmm. I guess I could just flash in Resto. Although, you know what? Um, getting down a wall doesn't seem terrible. Um, draws a card. Could hit that land we're looking for. Okay. Oh, that was awkward. Um, all right. Uh, well, hang on. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was thinking about uh, pathing. That was why I was hesitating with with ephemerate. I was thinking about pathing with with ephemerate on the tr on the stack and then uh, doing the double path thing. But honestly, let's see what's happening here. Finale. Um, yeah, seems okay. But I'll just do this in response. Yeah, the only reason it's better, honestly, is because I had two Ephemerates in hand. Um, if you only have one Ephemerate, it's so important that you keep that Ephemerate in your hand. But since I do have two Ephemerates, um, well, I have the extra one in hand, I think I'll let the other one go to the graveyard here and, and actually do the double path thing here. 
And uh, welcome to the stream, Kyle. I haven't seen you around in a while. I was saying earlier, I'm going to start doing regular uh, Merfolk streams on Wednesdays. <clears throat> Spellskite. Yikes. Okay, well, double path it is, I guess. Um, sorry about that. Just knocking my microphone around. We can always get the second ephemerate back uh, later in the game. Maybe I should have gone, I guess I have to go after Druid here, right? Um, and then I'm going to go after Lurus now, which they will redirect. Do I just, do I just go after Spell? I guess Spell Sky's gonna get hit anyway, right? Um, And this, uh, this Astrolabe will open up my white mana soon enough. Yeah, I'm definitely going to target the lures. But now the spell skite goes away, and we should still be able to double path uh, next turn. I could even I think I could do it again this turn. No, I don't have double, two more white. I only have only gonna have one more white. Okay, opponent does the redirect. Yeah, but I need I need two white to do anything important. Yeah, but I okay, there we are. So now we can just get rid of Lurus, I think, right now. So I do want to get Canopy Vista. Um, and then I'm going to Ephemerate and then Path right now. Uh, you know what? I'm going to buy back the second Ephemerate. No, I can't use two more white right now. I'll just get Path, and then we'll get the second Ephemerate at our leisure. Uh, I don't really... I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing this all in my main phase. Um, at this point, I can't cast Coatl, um and do this, even if I use Wall of Roots, so... All right. So Lurus dealt with, uh, that devoted druid is out of the picture. Opponent gets to start digging, fair enough. But we do have infinite paths at this point, and infinite ephemerates, effectively. Giver of runes, not going to do all that much. Another activation. I mean, like, walking ballista, I was just saying, would be good for eternal witness. It's actually pretty rough. Um... I mean, I don't know what they're thinking about. Just, pe just play that and get, get it down right now. I can draw a ton of cards with uh, my Ephemerates and, and Ice Fangs and everything. It should be a win condition for them, but I think it's just going to ping my Eternal Witness. Yeah. Okay, so we know they have a Giver of Runes in hand. Um, not too big of a deal. We haven't cast Orion yet. You can draw three cards off of her. Um...
Uh, all right, not the best draws, not the best draws. Um, but I can play, I can play Ice Fang, and um, and then cast Orion. Seems good to me. Start with Ice Fang. Hierarchs, uh, yeah, they're only good for cord. Um, here though, I can, I can, hmm, I just use that mana. So yeah, I just need to get uh, Orion now. So we got the mana already set here. Um, so it doesn't really matter what I grab. Using a little bit of auto tap there. Good old MTGO auto tap. It's like the least intuitive thing in the world. Stack the triggers, because it's very important which card I draw first. Well, those are some cards. Okay, we know about that one. All right, that guy's going to get dealt with. Okay, no cards into their hand. That was nice. All right, I uh, got a land here. I guess Arcades would be pretty awesome here. Just like smash, smash the opponent. Uh, yeah, let's go for path to exile for now, I guess. Well, let's get let's get ephemerate first. I'd like to get multiple ephemerates going. That's how our value really goes bananas, I think. Now, if they path or something in response, if they do have some rare removal, um, could also just get another Eternal Witness. This one has Duskwatch's name on it. Um <clears throat> At a certain point, it kind of feels like you're 
executing like a combo or something, just going through the motions. Hang on a second, hang on a second. I guess I could do this all at instant speed, it doesn't matter. Oh wait, it does matter. Mm, I was gonna prevent, uh, protect the Dusk Watch. That's annoying. Um, I can, uh, yeah, I just can't get the path back in time. Um, all right, Dusk Watch lives. That is, that is annoying, but I can, I can, I don't know, play deputy, nab their birds. I mean, it's just. Now we can't block in the air. And two turn clock in the air. Um, I'll go get back a path right now. And send it the opponent's way. Could have played a Noble Hierarch or something. I'm just trying to preserve like a few seconds here. Okay. Activate away opponent. Birds resolves. Opponent scoops. Uh, all right, so game one, I used more than half my time. It's unfortunate. I'm probably going to lose game two. <laughs> it's a pretty difficult matchup. So Dranith Magistrate probably comes in, keeps him from casting Lurus. Uh, we saw Spellskite in the main, so maybe Kazali Pride Mage comes in. Phyrexian Revoker absolutely comes in. Um, I guess Scavenging Goose comes in. Uh, I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick. If you guys have any other suggestions for sideboard stuff. Actually, let me trim real fast. Um, perimeter Captain seems bad. Um, and if that comes out, I guess Arcades can come out. We want more interaction here, I think. So, um, Maybe one wall of Blossoms or something like that. Charming Prince not doing a lot in this matchup. Let me just trim the Charming Prince. I guess it is... Now nah, I'll keep Charming Prince. I'll trim, like, one Wall of Blossom, I guess. Um... Yeah, let me hustle the bathroom. Be right back. All right, sideboard look okay, or would you guys change anything? All right, heads down, playing fast, trying to win. That loop with the paths was pretty cool. Um, very powerful against their deck, I guess. Uh, and I guess we have to keep this, huh?
Go like green, blue. I'm gonna keep green, blue, basics, and then third land can be. Well, then we won't have. I guess we'll have Eternal Witness off of Wall of Roots. This is the question is if they have um, turn one giver, do we path it? Oh, they don't. Okay, they just have Noble Hire. Definitely don't path that. Although, I mean, I may just want to get um, the path here, I guess. Birds resolves. Opponent did mulligan to six. Get in if you want. That's fine. They could be holding up, um, I guess, Ella Domri's call. Nothing I can really do about that. So cord for uh, revoker naming. Um, Naming Druid. Opponent going now, I guess. Okay. That's fair. Okay, Wall of Roots is going to take us right up to Court of Calling for a Revoker. We should just play a second uh, wall. That'll, that'll also get us there. All right. So let's see. Um, the play play another wall, path something. Then I can't also um, I can't also cord for revoker. Opponent can play a land, play Lurus, and replay devoted druid next turn. It seems kind of annoying. Um, So maybe I just pass. Let them play um, something that would let them go infinite. Um, actually, I don't really want to give them the mana from Devoted Druid if I can uh, prevent it. So, And also, um, I think I'm just going to Cord for a Revoker right now. But I'll play the Wall of Roots first. Wall of Roots, so good with Court of Calling. This actually prevents them from making any mana with Devoted Druid. I believe, right? I have to, I always forget between Pithing Needle and, um, yeah. Wouldn't be surprised if they had a path or something like that. They did Mulligan to six. Uh, they have their mana and they have their combo pieces. So to also have the removal might be asking too much. Uh, we can play this on tap next turn. We can path something and play Orion. Well, that's unfortunate. Although um, Eternal Witness can get it back unless the opponent has the Vizier in hand, which why wouldn't they, right? They have all three parts in hand on a mulligan to six with removal. 
Well, walking ballista is in the graveyard. Um, how do they win here with creatures? They called for um they well they called for uh devoted druid a while ago. Yeah, but they can't get finale of devastation off of Duskwatch Recruiter. They can play the creatures in their deck, but it takes a long time, and that will at least equalize on time. If they let me untap, well, I mean, I can't really do that much. I guess if I draw, uh, I do have a Winds of Abandon in the deck. If I draw my Winds of Abandon off the top, I guess I get to uh, wipe their whole board. I've got six mana. One, two, three, four, five, six. How, how do they scry it? Oh, well, once they get something to help them scry with, right? I guess. But but how what do they have that lets them scry? This thing oh I guess they get every card out of their deck or something, but it still has a whole bunch of lands, a whole bunch of random spells. They can't just put finale of devastation on the top. I mean, if their plan is to go through forty four cards in their deck and find finale of devastation. Uh, so this is pretty boring. We do actually have an out, though. Like, we're not just being, like, jerks and making the opponent play it out, even though it's not really being that jerky to make the opponent play their deck. Um, we have... We have Winds of Abandon. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna, like, do some... Oh, calisthenics or something. Oh, I'm so sore. I don't know. I think they. I don't think they have a ballista. There's a ballista here. That's why. I'm, that's one of the big reasons I'm making them play it out. I think they only have one ballista. But if they have two, oh wait, they have two. So now I guess it's just a matter of them making a bunch of mana. And again, I don't know. We're sort of incentivized by the Magic Online system. I'm not. I'm not trying to like F two every single one of this guy's um, activations and try to like put him off his timing. Just make them actually uh, take the actions. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna like add mana with Wall of Roots to like slow them down. Opponent can really just do it now, right? Oh no, not quite. They have to do like forty, right, or like thirty-six or something like that. Because they do have an attacker here with Dusk Watch. Well, this was kind of a frustrating game. I mean, if I was on the play... Wait, so they... Huh. What have we seen so far? Um, we didn't see... Uh, I guess they must run um, that green snake god guy that gives everybody trample as like an alternative to walking ballista. But I could have just named walking ballista with Phyrexian Revoker rather than Druid if it's literally their only win condition. But then they just play their whole deck of creatures, and um, that's also a decent win condition. All right, so time getting fairly equalized. We'll be on the play this time. Um, kind of ridiculous that they run like maybe two walking ballistas in the deck oh no wait hold on a sec yeah two walking ballistas probably in the deck and they had one in hand on a multi six along with the combo to deal with phyrexian revoker and i also like was tapped out and didn't have like ephemerate so many so many ways that that this uh this hand from us could have just uh could have gotten this game all right so my deck takes a long time because I have to think about what I'm doing. Opponent's deck takes a long time because they have to do a lot of mindless actions. Either way, we both end up with nine and a half minutes left after, uh, after game two. All right, 
what could have we done differently that game? Uh, probably not too much. We kept Path and Eternal Witness. Uh, we got to Cord for our probably our best piece of of hate with Phyrexian Revoker. Opponent just had a. <laughs> opponent just had the Walking Ballista in hand. Like, why not? Why wouldn't they have it in hand? Earlier in the game, they cast Eladomri's Call to find their devoted druid. So that was piece one. They had um, Duskwatch Recruiter in hand. They had um, Vizier in hand. They also had Walking Ballista in hand. That's a lot of things in hand. Why am I at 920 right now? That's... Why did it take 10 seconds uh, off my clock? I think I have to mulligan this. No white mana. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. Have to mulligan. An opponent is keeping their seven. Awesome. And I'm continuing to find zero lands. Uh, or I guess one land. Oh, God. I guess I keep this, and we'll keep Path. I mean, all this... Okay, we're going to put that on the bottom, and we're going to put... I don't know. I mean, Witness is good, but we don't have mana, so... And we also... Actually, I'll pitch Pride Mage. You'd mulligan to four? I don't know that a mulligan to four is really going to get us there. I think just trusting in the top decks has a better chance. If I draw any fetch land, I've got another, another draw coming with one of these two cards. No, the first hand had um, no spells until turn three and no white mana. Actually, it had Dranith Magistrate, but, but I had no white mana to cast him um, and no other, no other lands to cast. So no other, <laughs> no other spells to cast other than Dranith Magistrate. I couldn't cast Knight of Autumn, which was in the opening seven. Um, Knight of Autumn, Dranith Magistrate. I just had like only green and blue mana. All right, well, uh, Hierarch will eventually turn on Path to Exile. Ugh. Land off the top. Give me a fetch land, please. Uh, I was a little bit late. I guess I can redraw with um, Kowaddle. But then I don't get... Uh, I don't get Hierarch down to give me White Mana next turn, but I think I'm... I don't know. Let's see. I think I kind of need to play the Hierarch now. They need to have the Vizier and the Wind Condition in hand. I have to kind of hope that they don't have that. But knowing this deck, the opponent kept seven. Uh, they're going to have everything that they need. And it's not even like what, it's just how they build their deck. It's, it's what it's designed to do. So, okay, oh god, it's just, <laughs> I said, like, it's what their deck does, but how do they have it in hand every single game? <laughs> like,
like every game, two out of three pieces. I'm just going to scoop, guys. Uh, we did our best. I mean, honestly, we were pretty far behind. I didn't really have good mana to like cast uh, Eternal Witness and get back Path and be able to cast it in the same turn. Um, so anyhow, uh, what was that opponent's name? I don't really want to play against uh, against that deck again right now. It was L Plants. Let's see if L Plants rejoins the queue. So yeah, I mean, these guys having like sort of minimal impact on the deck. I mean, as a two of in an 80 card deck, they should have that minimum impact. And uh, I like having access to them for when, uh, when we do play against Burn, I guess. No, I didn't. I, did, I, drew, into the, I drew into the Noble Hierarch. Otherwise, I would have played it. Like, why would I play a wall ahead of mana fixing? Uh, all right, I'm going to do it. If, if that guy wants to roll me one more time, fair enough. We'll get some practice in the matchup. Let me fill up my water real quick. I'm pretty sure I drew the noble off of the wall. Linvala. Linvala prevents people from casting spells of a certain color. You want Linvala in the sideboard or in the main deck? I'm going to keep it. It's risky. <laughs> it's so risky. Um... Yeah, turn one removal wrecks us, but there's always risks in magic. <laughs> okay. We're on the play. We get our ramp down. Could also draw lands. Uh, doesn't look like a bolt deck. Could be a bolt deck. All right. It, you know, we're probably going to lose anyway because it looks like Storm. Uh, Linvala, right. Yeah, I was thinking about, um, a bigger, a bigger angel. The one that you can choose a color and then opponents can't cast that color. I do have Stonehorn for the goblins. Uh, I also have Wids for the goblins. <laughs> go, go. Wall of Blossoms. Ah, miss my land. Opponent's going to grape shot my noble hierarch. Don't do it, opponent. Don't you grape shot my noble hierarch. They did bottom bottom with Serum Visions. Is this uh, just an Electrum? Oh! They grape shot in my noble hierarch. Now I'm gonna draw land. <laughs> I just have to, right? Come on. Oh Jesus. <laughs> punished. Straight up punished. Where are my astrolabes at? Good play, opponent. Good play. I totally one hundred percent agree with that line. Have you guys ever looked at the face on this thing that's grape shotting us? It's like the Predator. Serum Visions. <laughs> okay, they went top top that time. Uh, okay, Brawl, and this is rapidly drawing to a conclusion. Hey! Look at that. So now I think I think wins on Baral is like kind of bad. Um, yeah, hopefully he just makes I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Good storm. It's like they're gonna kick our butt anyway. Uh, 
They've hit their land drops, right? We were on the play. They've hit their land drops. Um, I don't know. Whatever. I, ge I, I guess. I think it's pretty close, honestly. Because giving them land, like, they're already at four lands. They can gifts and do whatever they want to do. Plus, they most likely have an extra land in hand. They're going to have five lands. I guess we'll see how it goes. I mean, I guess I have to. I could play, I could play wind, uh, Wall of Blossoms and try to draw land so that I can actually keep playing Magic. Storm players will tell you that um, pathing their Barals and Electromancers is really not that great, but I, I agree that you kind of have to, and it's, it usually ends up being not that terrible. All right, so this means now uh, we can, like, Quaddle plus Ephemerate. Um, we can also just Soul Herder. Um, getting semi-close to, um, to Venser. Um, I mean, we're, we're probably dead. Just thinking about what makes us the least dead. I guess I could play Kawaddle, um, hopefully draw into like a path and just hit the Electromancer again. Uh, Soul Herder is nice value to get onto the battlefield. Um, yeah, might as well do that now, I guess. And then whatever the play ends up being next turn, I, I, whatever cards we draw are going to determine it, I guess. It's one of those matchups where I was thinking silence could be a reasonable card rather than just running a lot of counter spells, like if we just prevent our opponent from casting spells on certain turns. Problem with that is unless we have the loop, silence is pretty bad. All right, they're untapping with five cards in hand and an Electromancer, so here we go. Let's watch the, uh, watch the show. I wouldn't love to have Force in the deck because um, if Force was in the deck, I you know I might not have Venser or Quaddle in hand. Uh, it's just I don't know. Like with eighty cards, I just found that having you have to work so hard to get the blue cards in hand, and you start adding cards that you just don't really want in the deck. Like I don't really like Watcher for tomorrow. Uh, I feel like the deck is already weak to aggro, and playing tapped creatures is not a good way to to fix that. Oh, I don't want to even watch this. It's just like same old boring garbage. How can people play decks like this? Like what is interesting about this? Every game on rails, the same thing over and 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 over. It's just like... Cards in graveyards lose all abilities. Um... Does that take away um, flashback, or is that just like a casting cost, like an alternate casting cost? Yeah, I don't, I don't really care too much about Storm, as you can see from my sideboard. So what, we won the first round against... I think we won the first round, right? I forget what deck we played against. Like, I'm blanking here. We lost to Devoted Druid, and now we're about to lose to Storm. I mean, Oriok Champion sort of gains life. I guess that's a potential way to get outside of Grape Shot. But they can kind of cast their whole deck. But, you know, it's better than nothing, right? Better than nothing. Um...
Is that really true? Like, if if I have Yixlid, Yixlid doesn't affect cards that enter after you play Yixlid. That's hard to believe. But I guess I guess I believe it. I mean, Magus of the Moon doesn't work with Merfolk Trickster. I mean, it does work through Merfolk Trickster. I have to sideboard some stuff out. Um, these walls, the uh, perimeter captain, obviously not that amazing. Um, Winds isn't out to one of their win conditions. Deputy Ditto. Reflector Mage. Mm, I guess it's sort of okay. Soul Herder is pretty slow, but again, sort of okay. Um, I, uh, Lavinia doesn't really do much. And keep Stonehorn, cut Lavinia. It's too expensive. I guess cut Arcades. So is what you're saying is that Yixlid only affects cards that are in the graveyard when Yixlid is cast. Just so counterintuitive. Um, but you can blink him always, right? Which is kind of unfortunate that you have to. Um, so do we learn from our mistakes or do we keep this hand? Uh, I think we probably have to mulligan. Uh, it's just really not not good enough. I mean, I can't I can't cast Oriok on turn two if I go get green. Um, but against Storm, honestly, like I have I have some hate uh, in scavenging ooze. Like if I get screwed to my mana, I'm already gonna lose the matchup anyway. So um, oh, Dranith stops flashback. This is these are things that I don't always. Uh, like Drenith, I just think usually um, about Cascade and about Companion. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna roll the dice again on this one, guys. Um, if I lose because I don't draw lands off the top, like I feel like that's better than like my odds of drawing a better hand against Storm than this. So now, we're, if we draw into three lands in a row, I might actually win this game. If I don't, then I'll probably just lose the game. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. I got it. Okay, lightning bolt. Cool. Wow, the mana is so clunky. So clunky. But I have to get green. It supports uh, Eternal Witness, and it supports Scavenging Ooze eating more stuff. Did opponent keep one land bolt? That would be cool. <laughs> okay. We'll never know, I guess. Two lightning bolts. Awesome. It's like what, what Storm is usually playing. It's lightning bolts all day. Um, okay. Pass the turn. <laughs> it's just like... Uh, Guess Hierarch can buy back Scavenging Ooze. It's probably the best option I have at this point. Super slow. Top, bottom. Okay, it's not the fastest start from Storm. Okay, nice. One more lightning bolt. I mean, Storm can definitely go off. They can just untap and just play their cost reducer and just kill me. But you, you could see like what the mulligan to one. I mean, sorry, not the mulligan to one. The uh, the one lander. Um, the one lander can do. The hand had some hate in it, right? It had had the scavenging ooze, and you can't really hope for too much more when your deck is really, really not geared to fight combo decks. Opponent went two on top, but they're passing. Okay, now this is where things get interesting. Venser is actually live at this point. 
but I think I've got to play Scooze, leave up two green, also leave up Ephemerate. Um, because if the opponent is going to play um, Gifts, they're almost certainly going to play it on our turn, and they don't have the mana for that now. If they do play uh, like Aria of Flame, we've got Knight of Autumn. But if they had, if you know, if they had in hand, they'd probably play it already. Okay, the return of Scavenging Ooze, and I don't really think Oriok Champion is really going to get a window here. I don't think so. They can't possibly have a fourth bolt. I guess they could have like an abrade or something like that. <clears throat> they could also remand it, but then I just cast it again. And once again, we could just be dead right now, so... So I've got one activation up with Scavenging Ooze. I somehow always manage to mess up like stuff like this, situations like this where I have Scavenging Ooze up. Like knowing exactly which card to hit at exactly the right moment. I guess I might as well just eat my Noble Hierarch. I can't really see myself wanting to get that back. I mean, any lands here are just going to be great. Um, because casting Venser with Ephemerate up might be a way to get something done in this game. I mean, it could, but it ends up just being... Past the, after the first turn, hmm, it's just one land per turn cycle. Unless I get Soul Herder in the mix as well. well opponent is really sculpting their hand here. Um, setting up. Um, they went bottom-bottom with Serum Visions. And here is a, a Grape Shot, um, which is unfortunate. Um, although I can flash in Venser at least to catch the, uh, the flashback. Um, on my upkeep, of course, is what I mean. Did they go three to Scavenging Ooze? They, sh they hopefully should have. They did. Good for them. One, two, three. One to me. One to the Witness. Uh, sure. So... I am going to eat the Hierarch. And we are going to flash Vincer in during the, uh, the upkeep. So Mystical Dispute would just be the biggest blowout in the history of Magic right now. So I guess we bounce Steam Vents. Or maybe just both of these Spire Bluffs. Um, then they both come in tapped again. So remember they have two Spire Bluff Canals in hand. Well... That's definitely need to draw an eternal witness. Um, cord, maybe? Wall of Roots, not really going to cut it, I don't think. Um, I'm going to go like Oriok. Um, Oriok into Knight and just. Um, I think at this point, Knight is just valuable for the. Uh, 
Oh, I could cast... Oh, hold on. I could cast uh, Urian here. Bounce another land. That seems like a good idea. Um... Yeah, I'll just cast Urian here, I think. Seems like it gives me the best chance. Get to draw a card off of... Uh... They could, of course, just remand this, which is gross. Ugh. So disgusting. All right. Go for it, opponent. So many sleight of hands, so many serum visions. Let's top deck Soul Herder here. Uh, keep bouncing their lands. I could I just recast you, Ryan. Okay, they went uh, top top, apparently. Hey. I mean, it seems too likely that they could have an, a bolt or an abraid um, in response to ephemerate. So, I mean, remand just kind of wrecks me either way. Um, they would remand the witness, in which case what I could cast. Um, also just need a bit of a clock, right? So I feel like Orion is... They went top-top here. Um, not really sure that bouncing a land is even going to do what I need it to do anymore. Um, scavenging ooze is just chilling over there. Um, could go try to go get that thing back, but then I have no mana up. Yeah, that's smart actually. Uh, that line because then, um, if Ewit does resolve, I'll still have mana up for Ephemerate with Wall. They do know I have Urian in hand. So if I cast that, odds are I'm going to have something else good in hand. And if they don't win next turn, and this just resolves like with no interruption. Yeah, I can't see how. Yeah, okay. They've cast so many hand sculpting spells that... All right. All right, so they know these two cards in our hand. Just play like Aria of Flame and pass the turn back to me. I did like that line, though. At least we got something on the battlefield rather than just sort of playing a 5-drop into Remand. This is a ridiculous hand out of Storm. Like, what is going on over there? <laughs> Stonehorn, not, not really what I'm looking for. Um, got all that mana up. There's two Remands in the graveyard already. I don't think they play like a full 4, though. Maybe they do. Um, this time, maybe I just go, maybe I've got, uh, let's see, um, I can recast Eternal Witness here, so I think that's probably the line. Okay. Now the question is, do we go for Scoos or Ephemerate? Um, and I think we have to go for Ephemerate. I could do Ephemerate on a witness right away, get back Scoos. But then, uh, let's see, I have one mana up for next turn. Um... At this point, bouncing, I guess I could bounce like a past in flames. Um, so I can go for, or I can afford to go for Oriok Champion here and still leave up one. Wanted to make sure that the Eternal Witness resolved. That's why I did the, uh, the sequencing the way that I did. Opponent knows that I have an Ephemerate in hand. Probably could have gotten in for two damage before I did any of this stuff. I 
idea with Oriak Champion in this matchup is at this point in the game, I could have potentially blinked a lot of things, and if I got it down early, maybe I would be up like six, seven, eight, nine life. Make it much harder for them to grape shot me. Opponent passing. This is wild. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I ephemerate now on Venser. And if they have the bolt, I can always put cast your Ryan and get Venser back. Or maybe I just go straight now for um, it, it's scavenging ooze. Let's see. Let's see what they do. All right, I mean, looked like they didn't have anything there, so I'm gonna I'm just going to get back the scoozes, I guess. Um Maybe the opponent's like really really afraid of Urian. Um, yeah, I mean, I just, I can't see how I don't try to go for scavenging ooze here. Uh, opponent doesn't like that. Go for a remand. Let's try it again. Eating their grape shot. Abrading the scoos. Well, all right. Uh, that's fine, I guess. Um, let's let's do it again, I guess. Uh, Metamorphose is a good one. So eat that. All right. Got rid of the grape shot. Okay, and they scooped. That's <laughs> a super weird game. Maybe they went too hard into the lightning bolts. Um uh so yeah, Draneth Magistrate seems like a good call. Um Stonehorn seems kind of lame, actually. Um, I'm going to take that out. Like, if I'm going against goblins, like, I'm just going to cord for deputy. I'm not going to go for Stonehorn. Um, I've been drinking a lot of water. got to run to the bathroom again. You guys let me know if there's anything I'm missing in the sideboard.
Uh, that's true. I was thinking about Forge Tender. Uh, something, let's see. Something that just came to mind is with all the shuffling around I've been doing with this deck, uh, sometimes I add things back like Yixlid Jailer without actually adding any uh, black mana. So literally the only way to cast this thing is with Astrolabe, um, literally with Astrolabe. So I think I'm just going to take that back out. I'll bring in one Forge Tender that I could cord for in response to like an Abrade. I don't think I want a lot of these guys because it can't really stop Grape Shot or, or the Goblins. Um, yeah, just one is fine as like a bullet if I want to try to save the Scavenging Ooze. So we got wrecked in game one. I kept one landers with Hierarch both games. So hopefully we get something slightly better to work with this game. Opponent kept seven that game as well. Well, this time we have one land with no Hierarch. Opponent's keeping seven again. So we will mulligan. And, uh, oh wait, I do have black mana. <laughs> so what's going on? I could have sworn I brought that in, took it out. But I guess I didn't take that out. Um, funny, funny. Um, so we're going to keep... Um, Reflector Mage is kind of lame. Um, yeah, to the bottom with the black mana, I guess. Makes sense. We, we do want mana, but we've got the Hierarch. So we keep. Bottom. I mean... And does nothing against combo. Like, I guess Reflector Mage, we're on the draw. So, wow, nothing to do on turn one. I guess they have, like, opt, maybe. Or just a bolt up. Well, we'll get our colors at this point, I guess. Eternal Witness can rebuy something. If they bolt the Hierarch, I probably don't even want to rebuy that. But there it is. Bolt right on time. Not sure about the Lightning Bolt plan out of Storm. I guess, I mean, it's a good card. And, like, they're not, they don't have any cost reducers in hand. Very strange. Uh, so I'm going to pass and play uh, Kowaddle on their turn. Kowaddle is at least, like, a tiny, tiny clock. Wow, all right, this is kind of cool. So are they going to remand my snake? I'd imagine they kind of have to. Like, why not, right? If they've got this, oh, they don't have the remand. It looks like they're just F6-ing. I know, which is like, I think they need to be mulliganing more, this Storm player. I kind of just want to play Reflector Mage out as a clock. Um, but I guess I can play, like, Witness is a similar clock. Yeah, I'm going to play Witness. They play a cost reducer if they finally draw it, and then I can Reflector Mage it. So let me go to Attacks. They could, of course, hold the remand for my turn, which would be fine, I guess. Probably going to want to get white mana with this Vista, so I guess I kind of have to play this Breeding Pool now. What does the opponent have in hand if not remand? Okay, Monomorphos trying to draw a remand. Pretty sure they're not going to draw it. Another Monomorphos? <laughs> oh, God. This is not where you want to spend your Monomorphoses. I guess they, want it, they need to hit lands, right? So they probably should even cast those on their own turn, I think. And now maybe a Bolt or something. They could have anything in their hand at this point. I guess not. Oriok Champion is kind of funny against goblins. Serum Visions, really looking for that third land. They went uh, bottom top. Found a land, good for you. It's kind of hoping they tapped out for like Baral there. I don't know, that'd be kind of cool. We're kind of clocking the opponent. Um, don't really want to play Reflector Mage. They went top top that time. Charming Prince uh, Scrying seems pretty good. Um, so Wall of Blossoms. 
into Charming Prince, maybe. Um, Charming Prince is also a bit of a clock, um, which is kind of nice. I mean, I would love to Charming Prince Eternal Witness and get something back, but there's nothing to get back. Phone's going to 16. This is the slow clock. I think scrying here is a little bit better than just drawing the card on the top of our deck. It'd be, it'd be really good on, on Ewit, but Scry. Cord is a nice one, right? Because we do have some stuff that we can go cord for. So we're going to go, I guess, bottom top. Next turn, we can play um, Urian and still have cord for two up. If we're going to go get, I don't know, Draneth Magistrate or... What else did I bring in? Opponent keeping the weird hands. Like they're really, it seems like they're really afraid of our creatures. So they're like keeping these hands with lightning bolts. I guess they got me with that grape shot in game one. They went top top again and they're still passing. Like what's going on? So what did I bring in guys? Um, kind of, kind of blanking. Let's, I, I definitely brought in Dranith Magistrate. Um, Oriok Champion. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, I guess I can go get Yixlid Jailer. Although I took it out because I thought I didn't have black mana. <laughs> I guess scavenging oozes the get. So if I'm going to cast Orion, um, I can't get away with casting Hierarch. No, it makes zero sense. That's like an absolutely essential critical part of the deck. So this is for five. We've got some kind of clock going on here. Oh, you know what? Hang on a second. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to Urian, blink all my stuff, and then potentially cord. Just hope that we don't die. Or, I mean, remand would be a little bit yucky here, but... Looks like they have it. All right, you got it, opponent. They did go top top, so they must like what they're drawing here. So this this looks very very much like uh, gifts ungiven. Uh, I guess we have to just pass the turn back. So now, now I think we cord for Scavenging Ooze trying to leave up mana to eat things. So we probably just want to cord in response to their gifts. But Draneth Magistrate. Draneth Magistrate means that they can't cast things from their graveyard. But, um, so that, let's see, if I attack, I get in for five. It's a two turn clock. Draneth Magistrate um, stops them from. No, I don't think that's true at all. Uh, well, I mean, I guess they could have an abrader of bolts, right? But the, the opponent has shown himself to just be pretty loose with those cards. Like, they've passed with mana up, I think, on certain turns. Um, I think that... I think getting they're going to tap out, right? I think getting Scavenging Ooze might just be better. It just eats what they have. So, But then we need to tap our green creatures to actually get that. Uh, get So one, two, three, four... If that's the case, I should probably play my Hierarchs. Because, um... 
there's no creatures to eat with scavenging ooze, so he's going to... I guess his purpose is just to eat two things in the graveyard. Probably um, past in flames, I guess. Um, you know what? Drowneth Magistrate, I don't know, it seems like a, kind of a good idea. Um, I like attacking, but I can't attack with everything. I need to leave three green up. I mean, I can, uh, I can get anything here, like any big creature. But I don't think our bigger creatures are really what we're looking for. I guess Venser can bounce their gifts back to hand. So, like, if I go one, two, three, and then four to get Venser and just bounce the gifts, that seems like a fine line, honestly. I can just attack with a two-turn clock. Um, I can still play my Hierarchs. I can play my Hierarchs, yeah, I kind of like that. Hierarch number one. Hierarch number two. That gives me three green creatures to tap. Okay. Getting the beats. And opponent, very, very, very uh, telegraphed gifts coming up. Don't F6. I'm hitting F3 right now to cancel any, any auto yields. And we are going to cord. So if they have force of negation, I lose. I'm not saying I win. I'm just saying I lose to force of negation. All right, opponent. Seven cards in hand, eight cards in hand. One of them is a Gifts Ungiven. What to do, what to do. Do you guys remember what the first match was this evening? I'm pretty sure that we won it. It it took a long time. So we've got, I believe, seven power on board. They have to kill two of uh three of our creatures to not die. Although I've got two two uh, hierarchs. Oh, scales, and we got there. That was that was cool. So we beat scales, and it looks like we might be beating like the worst storm player that ever ever played it. Like, <laughs> I don't. I'm not really trying. It's not a personal attack opponent, but like some very questionable choices. And we could definitely still lose to storm. They're just passing the turn. This is madness. Another cord. That's pretty sick. Um, now what do I want to get? I honestly like. I have to say, like, I'm typically really good about knowing exactly what cards are in my deck, but I keep changing it all the time with this deck. And there's 80 cards, so I guess Restoration Angel, a Blinking Venser, is probably the best line to avoid. Um, I don't I don't gifts for like lightning bolts. What are that what's what's being represented here? I think I just go to combat. Um the wall is gonna give me um enough to cord for. Now it, the first one was um was definitely scales. Don't want to attack with these little guys. Do want to attack with these guys. Go get them. So we've got, what, a braid for one. A braid on Venser. Do I want to save that dude now? I believe I do. I can, I can blink Venser, send me a braid back to hand, but I don't really... Oh. 
I think I do want to save Venser, right? I mean... So let's say I let Venser die, and I cord for Eternal Witness. I have just shy of the mana I need to, to recast it. So one... Okay, hold on a second. One, two, three. Go get Eternal Witness. One, two, three. Eternal Witness. Yeah, I can't recast him. Um, yeah, I mean, all right, you're right. Let's, let's let it go, I guess. Venture's just really valuable. Um, repealing this guy. Um, I don't think there's anything I can do about that. Um, so... Um, Again, uh, Ewit, I just have one shy of the mana I need. Um, I know time is running low. I think I've got it covered. Wait, what? I, I wanted to click on Eternal Witness. <laughs> How did that happen? That's really weird. I should have like a, uh, a Venser in hand instead of a land. Uh, ugh. Opponent's got a lot of cards in hand. Finally found an Electromancer. I think we might just be dead. Which is unfortunate. I feel like I should have uh, eternal uh, resto restoed the uh, the Venser. Well, tell me, instead of saying it's loose, tell me what I should have corded for, I guess. Yeah, but what does what does Urian do against against storm going off? Yeah, but I'd be sitting here with a handful of cards and no interaction, right? It's it's fine, but what am I courting for is the point, right? Like what do you get here to stop storm from winning? That's the question, right? I thought I would get scavenging ooze to stop the opponent from winning. So if there's if there's a better chord target, then you know, let me know what the better chord target is. Yes, but but I have I, I have just like lethal there at one life, right? And I have two minutes on my clock. So let's see. Um they've got five mana, and I guess I have to put pass in flames and hope that I don't mean That they cast some random thing before they cast Past in Flames? Like a cast like a Serum Visions and then I can respond. Yeah, I don't there's nothing I can do with scavenging news in this point at this point, I think. So 
So I'm still waiting for you guys to tell me what I could cord for because there could be. I think I think the line that I said that I I, I, was, I wanted to do uh, for bouncing Venser and sending the uh, a braid back to hand, or at least not sending the braid back to hand, if but maybe just sending a land back to hand or whatever, um, would have just been, I think, better, right? Than letting Venser die. I'm not really sure what the point of letting Venser die was. <laughs> Sometimes I think I just listen to chat a little bit too, too readily. I mean, it's normal. It's normal. Uh, I could get. Oh, you know what? I could have gotten um, potentially was Dranith Magistrate because that would have just straight up stop uh, stop them from playing um, Past in Flames. So, I mean, I guess I've never played, um, I, that was, that was a little bit loose. I just, um, let them kill Scoos without eating anything. But at this point, uh, let's see. I mean, I'm super dead. I could have eaten one or two things with Scoos before it died, but just trying to think about how I could have played this better. Honestly, I think courting for Resto would have just... Let's see. How did they not die? They had Repeal for one of my creatures and a Braid to take one out of combat. So Resto blinking Venser, and then... Um, yeah, I'm dead. So anyhow... Um, Against Storm, I feel like if you make one wrong decision, you're going to die. I probably should have died like eight turns ago. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was interesting. I could definitely add cards to the sideboard. I was talking about adding um, Eidolon of Rhetoric. And... I think that would be a good one uh, for, for sort of combo matchups. Like maybe better than Yixlid Jailer, which requires black mana. I don't know. I, I still have this Overgrown Tomb, which is just like a mistake. Let's see um, if I could go grab an Eidolon of Rhetoric. It's just to have a tiny bit of help against these combo decks. Oh, I need to type in go bots here. Um, I mean, there is a big, big nonbo between Idolin of Rhetoric and uh, our deck. So I don't really love bringing it in against lots of random decks. But it does sound like it could probably help against burn. We do have flash things, so we could cast something on our turn. Well, burn can do that as well, right? But the blocks can hold up, is what you're saying. It's a three drop, huh? I thought this was a two drop for some reason. Oh, I sorry guys. Um, my bad. Give me a second. I'm actually running low on these tickets here. Did you, I didn't even see how much it cost. This is a mess. Okay. Yeah, Shalai is Shalai is pretty good, I guess, but um. I mean, what, which matchup are we talking about? I guess we're talking about, Bur like, I guess the Storm matchup in particular, right? They, um, could, they could stack the first four Grape Shots. I guess, no, they can't target me with any of the Grape Shot triggers uh, as long as she lies on the battlefield. So that would be something to have against, um, against Storm. Also decent against Burn, also decent against Valakit. Um, Okay, let me add one of these things.
But then does Shalai live in the main or does she live in the in the sideboard? Probably in the sideboard, I guess, right? Let's see. So Shalai in the main board. Interesting. Uh, I don't know about this guy, honestly. I feel like there's just way more impactful stuff, like even if I'm just running like more abundant growths and stuff like that. So that's that's um, just a really quick patch. Um, I'm not exactly... Oh, I wanted to try Shalai, right? So trim one, Abundant Growth. I believe I do have a Shalai. Unless I don't. There it is. Okay. Um, lot of four drops. Trying to play around um, <laughs> Idolin of the Great Rebel. I'll play one more match tonight, guys. Um, go fill up my water real quick. Oh, we have an opponent my water later. What's up with these weird hands today? Really consistent throughout the evening. It's not like I've trimmed back on my lands. It's like whenever I start a stream, I just all of a sudden start getting wild hands. I'm not really sure what we're playing against. Could be just about anything. Okay, they got a triome. Hmm. And a mystic sanctuary. All right. Um. I think we might just want to cord on our main phase here um, for something good, like a... We can only get two drops. I can't get Soul Herder yet. I'd like to. I could have like a spell pierce, that'd be obnoxious. Um, although I could, I could, I can cord on their end step, let them counter it, and then untap and cord for Soul Herder. Thought scouring me, trying to turn on, I'm sure. Drown in the lock. This is going to be CMC5. I will have five cards in there. So I think it's time. I, I got to do this. It's, it's almost, I can't imagine it being mill. Like this, it's kind of weird. Um, I think I want to rip this cord now. Pretty heavily representing Drown in the Lock when you start milling your opponents. Uh, so, I mean...
Wall of Roots is good. It lets us get to Orion next turn. I think I'll just go with Wall of Roots. I mean, I don't really, I don't really see what Charming Prince does so much here. Um, it lets me, it lets me cast Orion next turn, which draws me two cards, resets Wall of Roots. Um, Wall of Roots is really powerful with Cord. Eternal Witness can rebuy the first cord. Now, of course, the opponent can just untap and uh, drown my Wall of Roots. It's just... <laughs> All right, you got it, opponent. That's I did want that card, I guess. Uh, thought scarring right now, trying to find that land, I guess. So now Orion is off the table. Oh no, it's not. I have I have Hierarch anyway. So So here, I mean just uh Eternal Witness seems pretty strong. Could also just get Soul Herder down. Like getting some value on the table. Getting some value on the table and then and then casting Orion seems really good. But these guys are probably going to untap into Cryptic. Um, let's see, one, two, three. Um, and then I have... Th I can cord for one. It's not great. Oh, I think just Ewit getting back Ephemerate is fine here. Um, hmm... Ephemerate right away, get back wall, cord for something. Um, kind of forgot there was an Ephemerate chilling over there. But I guess just getting down the big beater is probably the best way to go here. Force them to have something good against it. No, I, I, if I attack for one, I wouldn't have been able to cast Orion. I got a lot of good cards. Need to sort of <laughs> make something happen here. Opponent with the a very interesting deck over there. Already committed two of their Mystic Sanctuaries to the board. Definitely just going straight to combat here. Um Okay, let's just see what they do. I mean, if they try to cryptic, like, do something with Orion, I could cord for, like, Prince and bounce it. All right, just taking some, some damage here, I guess. Um, so now we've got cord up for three. We could have four if we play Hallowed Fountain here. Um, can't see a reason not to play it untapped. Um... It could also just be setting up some kind of wrath. What is this? It's uh okay, it's Sultai, huh? I don't really see any reason to overextend. We can just sit back on deputy. I mean sorry, on cord and go get like Uro. Like an end step cryptic something? It would seem kind of weird. Yeah, it's not going to work out as well as they want it to. Um, it's also going to prevent them from drawing a card, unless they have Force of Negation. I can go get Resto, I guess, right? Oh no, only three. Um, I guess it'll have to be two then. So one time, no Force of Negation. Sweet. It's going to counter their draw. I love it.
Wait, what? Oh, it was my end step. It's going to come back. I'm going to put... Uh, it's awkward. Awkward, awkward. It was... I guess it makes sense that it was end step. But it did counter the draw and... Didn't put Uriah back in my hand, so that's nice. I don't really think I want... Okay, opponent just scoops. <laughs> that, was, that was a pretty big blowout right there. So it's some kind of salt I control. Now I'm going to fill up my water. Hang on a sec. I mean, they could be on Planeswalkers, so Revoker could be good. I mean, most of these Sanctuary decks are Urza decks. Many of them are. I uh, didn't think that they had a uh, companion. Snapcaster, uh, Dranith Magistrate would turn off Snapcaster. Maybe that's worth having in the deck. Mm, we didn't see any artifacts, and if they run them, it's probably just Astrolabe, and I don't want to nuke my own. So scavenging ooze, definitely. You guys see anything that you like in the sideboard? Not a very aggressive deck, so I can probably trim some number of walls. Um, can trim the abundant growth, maybe? I mean, we could expect something like Torpor Orb and maybe just... Hedge with Kazali. It's not a bad card, even if they don't have anything I want to blow up. Uh, it didn't seem like they had a lot of creatures. It could, it could definitely be an Uro deck, probably is an Uro deck. Um, in which case, um, could probably trim uh, on thin ice and winds and just leave in like three paths to deal with Uro. No, Pride Mage, like if they play a Torpor Orb. Um, we have, like, no outs to Torpor Orb except Cord for Kazali Pride Mage. And so, like, we just dominated game one. Like, it's a small price to pay, like, uh, in case they bring in that um, sort of really crushing sideboard hate against us. I, I, I think in general I do like sideboarding this guy in almost, like, all the time uh, for game two. I just haven't been thinking about it too much tonight. Uh, so we did end up losing to Storm, which was slightly surprising since it was such a weird match. Uh, all right, this is a keep. These are these are kind of opening hands that my deck likes to see, I guess. We like like a bit of card draw. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Um, Arcades. Interesting. All right, opponent doing some weird stuff in modern. No plays on one or two. Hmm. That seems... Well, I kind of like getting mana down, but if something is going to eat a um, piece of removal, I guess I'd rather it be the, the Ice Fang. Or a counter spell, you know. Let's see what they've got. Mystical Dispute. Nothing. Fatal push. You got it. Okay. That's that was actually kind of a cool draw. 
And by kind of, I mean super duper cool draw. So now they play a Planeswalker, I play Revoker. I don't know. I can play Arcades next turn, then, then play Wall of Roots later. Seems good. Just hold a Venser on their turn. Field of Ruin. Snapcaster for push, huh? I don't think there's anything I can do about that right now. Uh, I could path my... Oh, I don't have white mana up, so it's not going to work. All right, so, I mean, whatever. This is not the worst thing in the world. Okay. Hmm, that yeah, doesn't seem very good right there. Um, unfortunately, can't play Arcades, uh, but we can play... All of Roots into uh, Phyrexian Revoker, uh, blind naming what? Blind naming Jace, maybe? Jace the Mind Sculptor? Is Oro? Field of Ruin. Huh. I'm, I'm not really keen on casting Path here. Um, no, Revoker is only non-land. Um, I think I'm going to get... I think just blue is probably more important than white. Although white lets me do something right now. But I don't want to Path the Snapcaster because they're light on lands anyway. So I'm just going to get blue. Okay, this could draw them into lands. Um, okay, looks like not. That's a good one. Okay, opponent tapped out. We probably want to play something big. Um, I could go... I mean, like, uh, we'd get no value from uh, Urian right now. So I could just pass with, uh, with Venser up. I could Venser a land. Um... If I cast um, Lavinia, I get to just attack for three, um, unblockable. Next turn, I can cast Urian and blink Lavinia. Um, I could cast Arcades and attack with the wall with Exalted. Kind of like that, actually. Um, <laughs> oy, but I think I do want to leave up path in case they cast Uro and I can I can nab it while it's just like chilling on the battlefield. Fortunately I'm going to swing for three here, but four plus the exalted I guess. Yeah let's do it. Cast cast this guy. Oh I gotta gotta crack this thing first. I do want to get canopy vista. Okay. Feel the jank flow through you. <laughs> Get in there, Mr. Wall. Screenshot time. Boom. <laughs> block. Block it, Snapcaster. Uh, don't block it. I don't know. Opponent's not even going to get tricked, like, because he's got the Exalted. Could possibly get tricked without the Exalted. And if opponent untaps here and uh, just like slams Oro, that's like so good for us. I mean, I guess Urian next turn is, is pretty good. Um, resets the wall, which becomes a 5-5. Five five. Okay, opponent representing Cryptic Command. We've got Venser up.
Maybe we just get in in uh in the air with Arcades before. I hope, like it'd be cool if the opponent forgot about Phyrexian Revoker and just played Jace. I mean, it's possible that's like the best thing they can do here. They did play the Overgrown Tomb untapped. Definitely got something to do. Come on, play Uro. <laughs> do it. Oh, Assassin's Trophy, huh? <sighs> I mean, that's okay. It ramps us, and we have Eternal Witnesses in the deck. It's all good. Um, yeah. That seems okay. So now, nothing, so nothing we can do here. Green, green. Need another island, I guess. Actually, well, almost. One, two, three. Just can't quite get the, uh, the Venser going here. Resto is interesting. Can't see how I don't just go for... Orion. Oh, just hold up Venser seems so good though. And then Orion's better next turn. Um I guess I'll just leave the Revoker around. I'm gonna leave up Venser for now. Yeah, they're they're definitely representing some, uh, probably um the uh drown and the lock. Oh, but yeah, drown and the lock is is I guess online. So I guess I cast Venser now. Try to like or maybe just maybe just uh Resto, I guess. Resto seems better. Can't do both. I have six mana at most. Like, if they want to cryptic this, that's totally kind of okay because then I just untap. I could be drown the lock, as I was saying. Um, oh, it looks like cryptic, which is pretty good. Sure. I kind of feel like pathing this stupid Snapcaster now and start getting in for some beats. Mm, seems impatient. Blood Grove. Nice. Mystical Dispute. Not a lot of value. That's okay. Okay, what's going on top? I guess probably Assassin's Trophy. Um, so. Oh, Cryptic Command. Sure. been a weird game um well actually i took I, I think i took the i took the little guys out but i didn't take arcades out um wait what was that <laughs> i i clicked through Orion's. uh i mean i was only going to bounce the wall of roots but that's ridiculous that i didn't actually do it Ugh. um jesus christ all right just pass the turn What was that? Just <laughs> distracted? Distracted by what? I wasn't distracted. I think I just fucked up. <laughs> we know the opponent has the cryptic in hand. Probably has something like Drown in the Lock. It's been such a weird game.
opponent letting this resolve. Interesting. So Venser would be one, two, like three, four. Still got three mana I could use. Um, I don't hate just getting another creature on the board. But either of these would let them get value out of Snapcaster. Um, so yeah, I guess it's just um, time to hold up Venser again, I guess. Ugh. So I could try to save Orion here. I mean, we know they have a cryptic command in hand, but I can't really see a much better use for Venser. Very patiently waiting for the opponent to cast an Uro so that I can try to path it. Yeah, haven't been seeing Drown. Um, is opponent getting in here? I think it's time to just path one of these guys, honestly. One has got cryptic in hand. Um, we just go to combat. What are they doing here? What? Um. All right. I got nothing at instant speed. I got a name human. I guess. So weird. All right. I'd like to draw one of my other humans now, but um, they still have cryptic up. They killed their own human. It's kind of dumb. Um, all right, so we can get them to cast. So one, two, three. I'd like to get my own Uro going here. Um, we've got it even with like attacking with um, Phyrexian Revoker. So if they, hopefully if they Cryptic... Um, like, if when I cast Cord on their turn. What's happening here? Tassiger. All right. Welcome to the battlefield, Tassiger. That's a decent target for Deputy. Uh, Lavinia doesn't do anything against that guy. I'm just gonna, I guess, one, two, three, four. Let's see. Might as well tap this. I only know five drops that I have. Um, other than Lavinia, none, right? I've already got Deputy like in my hand, so I'll just say done. I think Uro is kind of the way here. Try to outgrind them. Uh, well, they, they have the Cryptic, which we knew about. But now we can hopefully untap and cast Urion. Or maybe, I guess, Reflector Mage is pretty good. Maybe I can do both. One, two, three, four. Five, one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four. Um, maybe Reflector Mage seems a little bit better here. Opponent's only got two cards. And they're going to rip one of them. Oh, Thought Scour. Targeting me. Why not? Dranith Magistrate in the bin. No Eternal Witnesses in the bin, though. Got a lot of those left. Opponent cracking Polluted Delta going down to five. We do have a follow-up with Deputy of Detention.
Okay, put encrypted command back on top. Really love to have one more mana. <clears throat> I think I might just commit deputy to the board with the opponent kind of tapped out just to get more power. I don't know. I'm going to hold deputy. Well, whatever. Actually, can I cast it right now? I need blue and white. So yeah, I can, I can do it. Um, I already have lethal. That's true. Let's just get a tapped land. Pass the turn. I don't need to cast that guy right now. So one of the, the opponent just drew, just drew a, a cryptic right now. Cycling a triome for three. Playing a Polluted Delta, presumably they have another Mystic Sanctuary. They're not really using their loop if efficiently. I'm going to start with that. Opponent could just have to tap my team here, which would be kind of cool. Well, I guess they have like a removal spell in hand. Snapcaster for Thought Scour. Um, I could, let's see, one, two, three. I could get, um, I could go get Resto to bounce. No, but then uh, Resto would blink this, take it out of combat. Never mind. Um, this is fine, I guess, just like trading with uh, a Revoker. We do know they have. Um, Cryptic in hand, so I think Cord on their turn seems good. We've got it for a pretty healthy chunk. Milling me. So weird. Okay, here's Tassiger again. So now we can cord, and they have to counter it pretty much. But this would be for Resto. Uh, they have a Cryptic in hand, so I guess we'll see. You know, they're going to counter this. But then we can play Lavinia and just win through it, I guess. Hope that they don't have something else. Maybe Deputy is better than Lavinia, or I guess maybe both. I guess I need to draw land for that. Eight. I've only got seven. So once again, we start with Astrolabe. Oh, she doesn't. It's true. Uh, so I'll just go for uh, Deputy, I guess. But then if they have removal, it comes back and eats my Reflector Mage. Um, maybe better is just casting Orion, hoping that they don't have another counter spell, I guess. I mean, they could have Push or Trophy. Um... I don't love going for the deputy here. What? No, I know. I would go after... What do you mean? I would go after Tassiger. Lavinia doesn't detain. Anyhow. Um, I'll go for Orion, I guess.
Should have used my creature. Oh, no, that would have killed it. All right. So anyhow, I'm going to draw a bunch of cards here. Hopefully make it hard for the opponent. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Stop. Okay. Yeah, I should have played my land. Two lethal threats. They can't play Tassiger. Um, they could, of course, snap Cryptic, that kind of thing. Okay, opponent just scooped. Some random Sultai control build. Obviously not, like, as optimized as some of the control decks running around modern right now. Uh, so I think it was, like, we beat Scales and we beat um that deck and we lost to storm and we lost to druid combo two decks that i would absolutely expect to lose to um i guess we can talk in the discord a little bit more about how we might shore those matches up the kind of non-interactive combo decks um any thoughts right now yeah i mean reflector mage is pretty good there actually um Against a control deck, which you might not expect it to be, but <coughs> opponent, <coughs> opponent playing Tassiger. Um, well, anyhow, it's getting late for me. I haven't had dinner yet. Um, I'm going to go say hello to my wife. Uh, came back from work a little while ago. Um, yeah, catch me uh, in the Discord and let me know your thoughts about how we might fix those matchups like against Storm, Neoform. Devoted, Devoted Druid's a bit of a different beast because... Um, we really just want to kill their stuff. Um, but I'm sure there actually could be other answers as well. Um, somebody mentioned Linvala just shutting down all the activated abilities. Yeah, Arcades, we did get in. I did get in one attack. I think I screenshotted it. Let me, let me see if I can paste it in here. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it was fun. I don't know that it seemed like it was bad, but maybe the maybe the spot could be used more efficiently. It it did get to attack once. That was exciting. Uh, so we can easily take out our Katie's. I do kind of like having both Stonehorn and Lavinia. Um, I feel like so often I'm trying to stop people from attacking me. Uh, tonight, though, again, our losses were just a combo. So um, we do super well against any deck that is even like remotely grindy. Like I, I think even like scales kind of fits into that, right? Because they play Luris and they're trying to generate value just by like recurring things from the graveyard. And we're just going to do that better than they are. You talking about Glenelendra? It does cost four mana to play though. Glenelendra... Um, Archmage. It's just slow against combo, I think. I don't have any in my collection right now for whatever reason. I could have sworn that I, I would have had them. Um, yeah, but I'm not looking for four drops to help me beat uh, combo. I'm talking about stuff like silence, um, various counter spells. I really don't like... Um, unified Will. I know we have a lot of creatures all the time. And the walls are hard to remove. So it's possibly like a reasonable consideration. Well, anyhow, thanks very much for joining me, guys. I'm going to send you over um, to another stream, I guess, now, if you want to uh, watch some more magic. Do you guys see anybody online right now? Um, let's see if I can... If I can see anybody. Um... Who is streaming right now? Uh, looks like Ross Miriam, um, Ivaros. I like that guy a lot. So I'm going to send Ivaros you guys. <laughs> or try to, if you, don't, if you don't abandon me. So go say hello to um, Ivaros for me. Give him my, my best wishes. And I'll see you guys. I'm going to be streaming on Wednesday night, uh, but it'll be with Merfolk. So if you're interested in, in checking that out, uh, join me Wednesday night. If you're not already following the, uh, the stream, 
uh, please follow me on Twitch. And if you'd like to subscribe, of course, um, I always appreciate that as well. So um, I'll see you guys Wednesday, I guess. Bye.